Why does the Academy exist? Why do we offer a course in ancient history? It is our purpose in ancient history to teach young people a full sweep of the ancient world, especially that which lies at foundational to uh, the rise of Western civilization. In fact, the course could be called that. And it doubles as a Bible course as well because of the Im immense number of passages, the context, the biographies, the events that we reference in the course. What you're looking at, however, the ruins of temples. Now, evolutions date from 12,000 years ago. However, these are found, these structures are found to be in the Bahamas. In fact, around the world, when we first presented this series, Cities Under the Sea, the ruins of, of cities, you'll see, for example, there's the grid of a city underneath the ocean. Those are temple steps underneath the ocean. Back in about 2006, when we released our cities under the sea, there were about 300 such sightings. Now there's over 3,000 around the world. Bottom of the Atlantic, Pacific, all the oceans, all the, the, all the major seas like the Mediterranean, the Baltic, and others. The fact is, when young people see the cities that obviously were covered by a great flood, and these cities were covered worldwide. You can see the grid lines. These are ruins. The grid lines of streets and others swept away. A city swept away by a great flood on the assumption, of course, that water seeks its own level. You're looking at the remains of what was once a city above the waves, now a continent underneath. Again, ancient civilizations with heavenly maps carved into them of Saturn and Jupiter and of the idolatries of the ancient world. Here's a, a letter written by Professor H. Hapgood from Keene, New Jersey. Here's a letter written to Professor Charles H. Hapgood, Keene, New Jersey. You'll note the signature, United States Air Force Commander Harold Z. Olmeyer, Lieutenant Colonel of the United States Air Force. The Air Force was asked by Professor Hapgood to give an account as to, well, this struck this map. In 1513, the Portuguese Admiral, Perry Rees, was known to have had this copy of an ancient map in his possession. How he got it, we don't know. Professor Hapgood wrote a letter. United States Air Force. The reason he wrote the letter is because this map appears to have the topological features, the geographic features of Antarctica underneath the ice cap. Underneath what? About two miles of ice on top of it? Now, United States Air Force, you can see that the as the Lieutenant Colonel writes, the lower part of the map portrays the Princess Martha coast of Queen Maudland, Antarctica, and the Palmer Peninsula. And that, uh, that claim he believes is reasonable. We find that this is the most logical in all probability the correct interpretation of the map. The geographical detail shown in the lower part of the map agrees very mar remarkably with the results of the seismic profile made across the top of the ice cap of the Swedish-British Antarctic Expedition, 1949. This shows that the coastline had been mapped before it was covered by the ice cap. The ice cap in this region is now about a mile thick. We have no idea how the data on this map can be reconciled with the supposed state of geographical knowledge in the year 1513 AD. Here's the kicker. Antarctica wasn't even discovered by the modern world until the mid-1800s. We didn't even know it existed. So how did a Portuguese admiral have it in his possession 500 years earlier? And who had that before him? Because Antarctica has been covered in ice. In our ancient history course, we go through every civilization. We show that the biblical data, or rather, shall we say, the data out there, agrees with the truths presented in Scripture. In this case, the frozen water that covered Antarctica at the time of the flood. And the climatological changes that took place. You see the importance of teaching our young people 
and unanswerable faith. So when they go off to college, as many of our graduates have, many of our students have who have graduated from the class that we offer, they end up challenging their professors. They end up living lives and building families built upon a strong faith that many of those young people came into it, this class and these classes. You might say with a chip on your shoulder. With that deeply embedded scorn that grows over time. You can see in just this example, in some of these, young people now have to come to grips with a biblical faith that has teeth. It shows the evidence of the things that they'll learn in class in all the different civilizations.